whirlpool where fibs and fabrications are pulled under and drowned. I'm Michael Worley. Cultural appropriation is a lot of hooey. I don't get it, I don't care about it, and if you think it's something I should worry about, I think you should be destroyed. For one thing, I don't have to appropriate anyone else's culture because my culture is the best one. If I adopt an element of some other culture, for instance as part of a Halloween costume, I'm not appropriating it, I'm mocking it. I'm ridiculing it from a position of cultural, moral, and spiritual superiority. I'm saying my culture is the best, and your culture has no value except as an instrument of my own amusement. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not just the people who complain about cultural appropriation that get my goat. What about the indifference displayed by these same people when a lesser culture, American popular culture, for example, appropriates something that rightfully belongs to a superior culture, like that of the one true church? I'm talking about St. Valentine. This episode of The Whirlpool is being published the day after most of this depraved, godless country celebrates St. Valentine's Day, which would be one of the most egregious acts of cultural appropriation in history if I believed in cultural appropriation. But I don't believe in cultural appropriation, and I'm not offended by it. What I am offended by is how popular culture has stolen the name and image of St. Valentine, reduced it to a crude caricature of its original self, and exploited it for the purposes of people who can't even be bothered to learn who he actually was and why anyone knows his name in the first place. It's disgusting. Is your faith too real for mainstream churches to handle? Then come to TraditioCon 19, the largest gathering of traditionalist Catholics in northeastern Pennsylvania of the year. There's no time to pray about it because tickets are going fast. Purchase an all-access weekend pass and get free admission to Sunday night's special feast of St. Patrick, where we'll burn an effigy of Pope Paul VI atop a pile of Vatican II documents. You don't want to miss it. March 15th, 16th, and 17th at the Farm Show Complex in Harrisburg. Just added for Saturday, Cardinal Noah Worley. Let me tell you who St. Valentine really was. He was a priest living in Rome in the 3rd century AD. In defiance of the order of the emperor, he performed marriage ceremonies so that husbands would not be forced to go to war. And those were good Christian marriages, one man and one woman, just like God intended, so don't you sickos get any ideas. Valentine was eventually arrested for performing Christian marriages, which was illegal because Christians were being persecuted by the government back then. Sound familiar? While in prison, he attempted to convert the emperor to Christianity, and for that, they chopped off his head. Sometimes I wish I could get special dispensation to cut off the heads of the Jehovah's Witnesses who are always showing up at my apartment to pester me. Mindless creeps, don't they see what a weird little cult they're in? But I digress. Skip ahead a few centuries to the 14th century, when the church designated February 14th as St. Valentine's Day, both to honor this great martyr of the faith and to combat the popularity of Lupercalia, a pagan fertility festival. I don't suppose I need to tell you how that one turned out. I didn't see too many stores selling Lupercalia cards these last few weeks, did you? Mission accomplished, St. Valentine. Of course, since the 14th century, the story and feast day of St. Valentine have been co-opted and corrupted into a celebration of lust and fornication, but that is not what St. Valentine stood for. He stood for proper godly marriages, where the sexual act is performed only for the purpose of procreation and only in the standard position. Our Heavenly Father commanded us to be fruitful and multiply, not to be horny and have multiple orgasms. No one who has or calls causes someone else to have multiple orgasms gets into heaven. St. Valentine knew that. He wasn't one of you. He was one of us. So keep your sinful hands off of him. And keep them off of each other, too, while you're at it. Heathens. For The Whirlpool, I'm Michael Worley.